In this video, I'm gonna show you how to find a design career that you genuinely love. I'm going to show you a framework which I found and adapted a little bit and only takes about 25 minutes to work through, but it could end up shaping the way the rest of your life pans out. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video and I'll show you where you can get a copy of this framework. And just before we get started, let me say, hi, I'm Parvin, I'm a designer and I teach people how to become better designers. So for the last few years, I've been working at a agency and I've learned loads about product and tech and UX from career coaches and mentors and from jumping around between different client projects. But I think for me and really for anyone, it's important not to stagnate and always be thinking about where you want your career to go, always kind of be progressing. One way to make sure you're considering all your options is to just go on LinkedIn and apply to every single job going, speak to every recruiter who messages you, a kind of scattergun approach and just see what ends up sticking. But the problem with this approach is that it means that you might end up with a job which you hate, which isn't right for you and doesn't kind of match your values in life. So a much better way of applying to jobs is to work out what you truly value and work out what motivates you and apply to jobs that align with that. So a mentor of mine at work recommended this framework to me. It's based around design thinking. So all the tools and techniques we use as designers around defining a problem statement, framing it as how might we improve things, coming up with personas, going broad and ideating and then narrowing in on a solution. It uses all those techniques. And you know the famous UX mantra, you are not your user. Well, in this case, you are the user because you're gonna fill out this framework for yourself. It'll help you tease out an explicit set of values and motivations, which you can externalize, put down on paper. And it does that by using kind of past big life decisions and working out what the motivations were for those. So with that being said, let's get straight into it. I'm gonna hop into Fig Jam and walk you through it. So this is based on a workshop that was created by Catherine Most and Lindsay Gordon. They presented it at a conference in 2018 and wrote up this Medium article about it. I've taken a few bits out of it and added some other things to make it as useful as it can be. And they say it takes about an hour to complete, but I actually think it's valuable to do it as quickly as possible and come up with loads of stickies and get them onto the canvas as quickly as you can. So I say it takes about 25 minutes to do. So this is the career planning workshop in Fig Jam. So we're just gonna hit open and there are three sections. So the very first section is this warm up over here. And this is a nine lives exercise. So I put this in as it's a very quick ideation, get to your brain, kind of imagination thinking very fast. So the prompt is this. Imagine you have nine totally different lives and in each lifetime, you do still have to make money. You're not getting a lottery hand out, but you don't have to worry about any specialist skills or degrees. You don't have to worry about the money or the prestige. You can just do whatever you want. So it starts by taking 90 seconds to fill out. So 10 seconds for each of these to come up with nine totally different career paths. That's just to warm you up. I should say here as well that up here in Fig Jam, you can turn on a timer. So if you wanted to add a one and a half minute timer, you can do that here. And that's really useful for keeping track as you work through all these sections. So after the warm up, we go into creating our persona. So we start by identifying career pressures that have come from around you, from family, from society, from your peers, things which you've inflicted on yourself. And all of these things, it's useful to externalize and just be aware of them because we are aware of them, but subconsciously. So by putting it down on paper, you're aware that these are things which are influencing your career decisions and may have influenced your career decisions up to now. So three minutes on this section, and there's some questions about how this has impacted you. Then moving on to thinking about your current job. Here, for each of these segments of the wheel, you need to score it between one and 10. So this section is asking you how satisfying is your current job in each of these areas. So fill in a number between one and 10, and you can even use the highlighter, which is down here, to scribble in a like, percentage of the pie chart, and you'll get a nice little wheel at the end of that. And then the third section is identifying your values and your motivations. So this is a biggie. This is writing down every single major life decision you've made. So that could be moving to a new area, starting a new job, deciding between different university paths or not going to university. Write down all of those decisions and underneath each one in red, write down what motivated that decision, why it was that you made that decision. Once you've worked through this, and you'll probably move away and come back and think of more things that you've done. Once you've done all of that, look at the red stickies, the motivations, and circle out any words that sound like they could be your values. So values could be a sense of adventure, a sense of belonging, maybe wanting to stay with a partner or wanting to stay near parents, or maybe wanting to get far away from parents or from relatives. So these values are what your core motivations are. And having them in a list of words written out on paper is 
just kind of really surprising, really um, shocking in a good way. Like it's things which are familiar, obviously, because they're your values, but writing them down is, yeah, just really powerful. Um, I should say at this point, I'm showing you a blank version of this because this is a deeply personal thing. And when I did this, I showed it to my partner and no one else. So after all of that, you can then go on to create your persona. So this is like any user persona. We've got motivations and values and then pains and frustrations. And these come from the two above sections of current job satisfaction and your values. So you can just drag things down into here. You'll see from the pie chart if you highlighted it that there's probably a few sections which are scoring really low, so they'll go into your frustrations. It's good to repeat this exercise regularly to make sure that your current career decisions are matching your values, so that's why it's good to put in a current date and current job as well. And you can use this little Polaroid to chuck in a photo of you here. If you haven't seen this, it's great, it prints it out. So very satisfying to do. So that's section one where you come up with a persona and you've got your values and your pains and your frustrations. Next is just eight more minutes and it's reflecting on previous careers that you've had. So in this section, if you write out every career you've had in the green stickies and then underneath those in the purple stickies, list out all the skills that were required for that job. By doing this, you get an assessment of where your skills set is and what kind of things you have done in the past and then move the purple stickies down into this matrix. So this matrix is things you're good at, things you're not good at, things you enjoy, things you don't enjoy. And you'll very quickly see there are some things which are really good and you really enjoy, some things which you're really good at but don't really want to do any more of, some things which you aren't good at but you do enjoy and therefore might be one thing to lean into and learn more about, and things that you're not good at and didn't enjoy, which you should just stop doing. So once you've moved the purple stickies down into this section, everything in this top left quadrant which you're not good at and did enjoy, you can move over to this area for learning experiments. So this is really valuable to keep track of your skills. You really want to focus on the top half, which is things you've enjoyed. But then for learning experiments, this is the final part of the framework. And here, you just need to take the top three skills which you enjoy, but you're not good at, and work out a short-term learning experience could get better at it. So it might be going to a course, or getting a book and working through it, or finding a mentor who's really good at that area and can teach you a bit about it. Anything which you think you might enjoy and might want to get good at. And yeah, just come up with a short-term experiment. And like all goals, this should be a smart goal, so it should be specific and measurable, and you should be accountable for it, and it should have a time frame. And yeah, just work through these and come up with a list of experiments for things to learn, which could be good for your next career move or open up things in your career. So to get a copy of this framework, just hit the link in the description. You'll be able to open it up in FigJam and work through all of those exercises. If you found this video useful, I would really, really appreciate it if you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. It just helps YouTube show these videos to more people who might find them useful. And I'd also really appreciate it if you told a friend about these videos. I'm hoping to make more and more tutorials and videos like this over the coming year. Anything you can do to help support that would be really, really helpful. Thank you so, so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.